Good morning, and welcome back to Hiking with Kathleen. Today, um, we're bringing you to a, a new setting, a different setting, um, and it's uh, where we're visiting some family here in cottage country. And uh, we arrived yesterday, had a nice relaxing night with Shannon's brother and his wife, and more family is destined to arrive today. So I'm just out here early in the morning before it gets busy out here on the lake to enjoy my first cup of coffee. So I'm glad you're here with me. We're gonna get out there and paddle later today. I hope you stick around. So this uh, is a lake that is uh, surrounded by cottages. So I can start to hear people waking up with the dogs and uh, the occasional motors. Now, motors that I hear right now would probably be of fishing boats. People would want to go out and uh, drop their line in the water because it's early in the morning and fish are more active at that time. And when Shannon and I paddle around here, we like to do it before noon because in the afternoon then you get uh, jet skiers and uh, tubers and water skiers and things like that. And that makes it difficult when we're paddling a canoe because of the wake left behind by recreational uh, boaters. So uh, once we're up and at it, we're looking forward to getting out there. We have a, the use of our brother's canoe and it's just here on the shore ready for us. And uh, you can see Miley's quite content. She ran into her little carrier <laughs> in our room. Uh, we're staying in a bunkhouse. And uh, they, and so anyway, so she ran into her little carrier, which is the way that we like to carry her to our cabin in the backyard. Um, so she kind of treats it the same way. When we do it when we're camping and we bring her into her tent, we just carry her uh, out to the tent. But in this case here, it's it's a bit of a hike to get from the bunkhouse to their lawn where uh, she sits in her tent right now. She loves it there. She was in there last night when we got here and the four of us were sitting here out on the deck having a nice uh, visit. And then it started to uh, get dark and it was uh, just nice to just sort of catch our breath after, um, you know, I don't know what it was, I guess about five, five and a half hours of driving yesterday to get here. But as I said to Shannon, that length of a drive is child's play, considering what we came from with driving to Newfoundland and back where we would have um, eight hour days sometimes, like that last day, a 10 hour day. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just enjoying the peacefulness here beautiful view across the way with uh, some coniferous trees, the rocky shore. So <clears throat> the lake itself has several fingers and when we paddle the canoe we like to go up and down those fingers because they're not as appealing to uh, the boaters that might create wake. So we go down and explore areas that have like marshy vegetation just to see what kind of critters might be in there. So to, sh to show you what I'm sitting on, on this Muskoka chair, it's a, it's just a, like a sleeping mat that people would use for hiking. It's, it's a lightweight one. I don't use it for that. I use it for situations like this because it's waterproof. So I'll just pump it up. It's got its own foot pump and I sit on it so that it keeps me dry from the heavy layer of dew that's on this chair. So yeah, it makes it nice and comfy here in the morning. Okay, and there's a little bit of padding to it too. <laughs> we 
with the sun just across the way from me. I know that I'm facing east. And it's really, uh, it, 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 the trees are obscuring the actual sunrise itself. But uh, you can see where the body of water around me and the vegetation has been getting brighter and brighter with the rising sun. Such a beautiful time of day. I'm just having a chance to check out some frogs. I found a little nook where they're gathering, where there's some vegetation that helps to conceal them. Um, I was using the GoPro that I have for underwater footage and uh, just crept around the edge of the water here and that's where I ended up finding them. And typically what you see is just the head or just the eyes appearing above the water. And so anyway, that's how I had a chance to see them. And there's one that I saw that was in the grass. Use the GoPro on that, but it doesn't have um, the ability to do telephoto uh, footage. So um, anyway, that's why I went back up to uh, our bunkhouse and got the telephoto lens in order to see what else I can capture out here that lives right along the edge of the water. Go up to the right. Okay. Okay, so Shannon and I are off for a little paddle. Um, it's fairly late in the morning, it's about 10.30. So we plan to do this for as long as the water is nice and quiet. Um, once it gets busy with boaters and the wake that they create, uh, we'll probably head back. So we figure we might be out here for an hour or 90 minutes. So we're really looking forward to being able to explore. To be honest, this is the first time we've been out in a canoe or kayak for 2022. So anyway, we're excited for that reason to be able to get out. look at these rocks up close. Part of the reason is it's just a lot different than what we see in southwestern Ontario. Give plants a lot of credit if they can make a go of it growing on a rocky surface because it's a very nutrient poor kind of habitat and some of them just appear as though they're hanging on for their dear life <laughs> there's not a lot of dirt under their roots or around their roots Okay, so we're going to show you what wake looks like when you have a fast boat. When you have a fast boat, we have to align ourselves to be perpendicular so we can face the wake as it's coming. It's always a delayed reaction, but the wake is uh, eventually going to make its way here. And sometimes if you are going parallel to the boat, the wake can tip you over. So if you face it, you have a better shot at not having that happen. So it's uh, just rolling waves. But as I say, if we were going parallel to it, that's where it could pose a real problem. You can see it's pushing us. <laughs> Not in the direction we want to go. So we came out for a short paddle today and it just so happens that um, this is a Friday. So there's more people up here than say if we were here maybe a couple days ago. 
and the ones that are out here are now <laughs> awake and they're starting to ride their boats but they're doing it in a way that is uh, creating a lot of wake. So we just figure, okay, well we had a chance to get out here and stretch our arms in a sense, or stretch out our paddles and enjoy this paddle this morning. But I think it's just, uh, you know, if we do this again, we'll probably just want to head out earlier. And right now we're just going to head back to the area where the cottage is. And it's just like one of those fingers that extends from this lake where there's a lot less traffic and the traffic that does go there is a lot slower traffic. So the wake is a lot lower. So, but this was really pretty to get back out here and paddle around. The rock surfaces are very unique because of uh, us not being exposed to that when we're living in Southwestern Ontario, but Southwestern Ontario has a lot more wildlife. So hands down, that's the place to be for wildlife observations. But there's so much beauty in the rest of our province of Ontario and the rest of our country. So we enjoy exploring that. So we're in a much quieter area here and it, uh, it's more marshy. I don't have a telephoto lens of any sort, so I can't show you up close, but we have um, painted turtles that are on logs. And maybe other things that are hidden in among the reeds. So we're gonna have a closer look. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna bring the canoe through that. So we're in the first week of August, and you'll notice how quiet it is. Songbirds, in many cases, are finished nesting for the season. And uh, song is their way of advertising their territory and attracting a mate. So those are all springtime and early summer activities. So it's a lot quieter at this time of the year. It's harder to identify birds, because now you actually have to see them as opposed to hear them. This is absolutely the kind of place we like to paddle. Narrow passageways. Vegetation on either side. So this is where you have a better chance of seeing wildlife sightings.
So Shannon and I just got dropped off uh, by her brother and his wife. And they're uh, actually just pulling off in order to go do a little bit of fishing while they're waiting for us. So, so we've been told that this trail is probably about uh, half a kilometer or something. And we're gonna continue along till we get to another lake. And so it's access only lake. So we have to get dropped off at this trail in order to make our way. So we're quite excited about this, exploring a new area and an area that wouldn't be available to us uh, otherwise. This is the kind of setting that we love. Um, I'm guessing that there's no motorboats allowed on this small lake. And so then you've got a pair of uh, loons that have set this up as their territory. Um, it's just very serene and peaceful. And there's a couple of uh, canoes and aluminum boats that are around in the spot we're standing, which is the end of the pathway. The pathway is very short, so basically a very short portage. Um, which is maybe about half a kilometer long. So it's short when you're not carrying anything other than your cameras. It'd be long if you're carrying all of your camping gear. And uh, this is where we like being, where you don't hear the sounds of traffic and that disrupting nature so that they carry on in their own natural way. Yeah. So we enjoyed a really nice view of that lake and gosh, lots of serenity around being on a lake that has uh, no buildings and no boats. And it wasn't long after we were joined by uh, three young men, probably in their 20s, and uh, an older fellow. I don't know if he was related to them, but he was arriving at the same time as them and uh, had been living in this area for 21 years. So anyway, um, we chatted with them for a while and then we uh, are now heading back along this half kilometer trail to be picked up by Shannon's brother. Enjoy this beautiful scenery.
first catch. First cast. So, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and that, folks, is how it's done. He hasn't thrown his line in yet today. morning. This is day two of, um, as in two full days of our stay here at Shannon's brother's cottage. And I went for a walk along the road that we took to drive in here. And uh, just in the hopes of seeing something different than sitting out here along the water. Turns out it was very buggy. <laughs> I was all zipped into my bug shirt and uh, I didn't see anything and I knew that the temperatures were going to get pretty pretty steamy today. So I came back, made myself comfortable out here on the deck, and was just treated to a nice, close showing of a loon. The loon just swam right by this dock and uh, is still in the vicinity. So you just sit quietly and nature comes to you. So Shannon and I are just uh, wrapping up our, let me see, four night stay with uh, Shannon's brother and sister-in-law. Uh, her son and his wife left uh, yesterday. So we had a really, really nice time. We had a chance to see some of those memories as they were being built. And I'm really glad you stayed with us on this adventure today. So thanks for joining us. We hope to see you next week. Bye for now.